All right, everyone, so we should have our project loaded up. And um, what we have, if you, uh, if you run it, as usual, we have our we have our project here, which if you're going with my example, you see that I uh, ended up choosing some colors and such. Uh, so I've got, we talked about those gradients. That was the ultimate CSS gradient generator. It gave me some cool gradients. And then I went in and, and added some colors for the, um, the nav bar and, and all of that. And we saw that that we thought we were doing something and it seemed to have worked but as we tested our project a little bit more we saw some issues one of them was that I had set my colors for my h1 or h2 tags but then it actually was affecting more than I thought and then we kinda of figured out what to do with that etc so that was CSS and what I want to start to talk about is remember in my example project when uh, when we go to the about, about screen there's also going to be a button to take us to that live navigation, a, a real Google map. So if I load up again the example, just to remind you, you've probably seen it a few times, but uh, in the About screen directions, it asks me to share location, which I say yes, and if I've got uh, GPS ability, then the resulting uh, map, the starting point, will be my GPS coordinates. If I don't have GPS, then that means that it'll go to a default location, which in my case I've set it up for downtown San Diego. Question? Daddy, I only see the 16th, I don't see the 18th. Yes, you need to copy the 16th to your desktop and name it 18th. Oh, I see it. So then here, if we, um, if we look at this, we're not in downtown San Diego because I don't have GPS on this computer. Uh, it's, it's wired to the wall, so there's no GPS. But if I were on a mobile device or a laptop, oftentimes works with a laptop too, it would have discovered my location and then get directions, and we've seen this before. But all of this works via JavaScript. This is the part, the next piece of the puzzle, the interactivity of things. So this is a big can of worms. Uh, so we're going to start slow first with some JavaScript, and then uh, speed up and be able to make this map. So um, remember in the book, uh, in my syllabus, there's a book that I recommend, uh, Sam's Teach Yourself JavaScript in jQuery Mobile in 24 Hours. Uh, and there's also another one called Sam's Teach Yourself JavaScript in 24 Hours. So uh, these Teach Yourself series of books are out on a variety of topics. And the one I recommended was uh, Teach Yourself uh, jQuery Mobile in 24 Hours. But, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to backtrack a little bit and we're going to get a, a little introduction to uh, JavaScript. So here in Notepad, what we've got for our project is actually too distracting to do what I want to do, which is a little intro to JavaScript. So we're going to create an empty document and play with some JavaScript. So in Notepad, let's go to File, Menu, New. Let's create a new document. I'm going to save it. You want a brand new blank document, and you can save it in the September in your September 18th uh, folder, and I'll call this um, JavaScript practice. And to make sure you save it as an HTML file. So this is a brand new file. It's empty and save it, whatever name you want, but make sure it's .html. And then uh, you'll need to take a moment to create a very basic HTML5 page, which I'll do in a moment. We need the doc type, the head, the title, the body, and that's it. Practice. We've done this before, but create a new document. Very basic, I need to put together. We've seen this before, doc type marking that it's an HTML5 document, All right, HTML tags, head, slash head, body, slash body. Technically, that's all we really need. But I'll add a title. JavaScript practice.
So nothing special. We've seen this before. Let me give you a moment to type this up. For practice, remember your slashes that end the tags. Go on just a moment. Uh, remember uh, to mute your devices, please. I almost forgot mine. So mute your devices, laptops, mobile devices. Put together a very basic skeleton like this, and then we will get started with JavaScript. Now, if you um, this is a little off topic, but if you uh, if you come in uh, with your own laptop or tablet, it looks like you know the not in a mean way, but the heat has been separated from the chat, which means that it seems that less people uh, show up now. So if you brought your own laptop and you'd actually like one of our computers, you you're welcome to take one uh, or continue to work on your laptop. It's just that it seems that now we don't have the line out the door waiting for a seat. So a very basic document, you want to save and run it, and you should just see a big old H1 tag that appears, and that's it. So, quick show of hands, how many of you have this basic screen up now? How many of you need a little bit of time? Okay, so JavaScript. It's a type of programming language. It's uh, been around uh, since sometime in the mid-90s invented by Netscape, I believe, and then eventually adopted by every web browser. Every modern web browser has JavaScript capabilities built in. In the beginning, it, it wasn't built in, and this and to have JavaScript was a brand new, uh, newfangled thing. And now every web browser has it built in. So we, we're able to write these commands that do something. And we've been writing code, technically we've been writing markup, HTML, where we mark from here to here, make it big and bold. And then we introduce CSS, cascading style sheets, which may, which we could write some CSS to say, well, this H1, now I want it to be red, big and bold, so we can write some CSS uh, to do that, to redefine the look of existing tags or create new sort of tags. And now we'll look at JavaScript, which are actual commands of a programming language, technically a scripting language, that will allow us to do things such as make a pop-up screen appear, um, change a background color with the press of a button, ask us to log in and authenticate uh, a contact form, um, check your GPS coordinates, all of this more advanced stuff, all of this interactivity comes from JavaScript. We're sort of creating mini programs inside of our inside of our HTML file to do things. Uh, so there's a, sort of like when we did with 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 CSS, where we wrote inside of a tag style equals whatever. That's an inline bit of CSS where it's only controlling that one uh, tag. And later on, we we looked at well, if we have instead a link over to uh, an external CSS file. Remember we have the we had the link tag where we had link, uh, href, etc. or source and we had a link over to a CSS file where we stored all of our CSS code in a central place. We can do the same thing with JavaScript in that we can write JavaScript in this file and it really only is accessible or usable by this file. A better solution is to write our JavaScript in a separate file. That way we can connect 10 HTML files to that one JavaScript file and they all inherit those commands. We'll get to that. But first we'll do the, the most basic way, which is let's write some JavaScript in this file. We, the way we do that is we go back to the head section, or actually just about anywhere in our document, but we'll put it in the head. Go back to your head section, line, uh, line 5, and we'll write the script tag. So script slash script in the head tag. I wrote it right before the end of slash head. Now JavaScript, as I said, has been around for a while. It's pretty much standardized. So much so now, also with the latest versions, 
with of HTML5, this is all that I need to delineate what follows is JavaScript, because there's other types of scripting languages, actually. JavaScript, ASP, JSP. And so in the old days, I would have to specify uh, script uh, type equals text slash JavaScript. Nowadays, since it's so standard, I'm not going to bother with that, because again, I'm running HTML5. So now that I've written script slash script, this is enough. I'm going to assume, and I'm going to target more modern browsers, meaning those that are not five years old. You know, in the, in the world of the internet and computers and stuff, and stuff, five years old can be pretty ancient. But uh, I'm targeting the newer browsers. That's why I'm not specifying the, what type of script it is. It's going to know. It's going to assume JavaScript, because at the very top, we've declared HTML5. Question? For um, mobile browsers, do they know that too? Yes, pretty much our, mo our modern mobile devices, Android, iPhone, Windows Phone, Blackberry, they all know uh, to follow the latest standards. The, the mobile browsers and the mobile devices, they, uh, they, they get updated and follow the latest standards a bit more uh, often and consistently than our desktop versions. You know, people were, were crying foul when they were going to finally uh, discontinue Windows XP. That thing is 12 years old, 14 years old, whatever it is. People were still using it. But you get one of these many times. People get one of these once every year, every other year, every three years. So these are much more modern. You're not going to run into some of these older browser problems. So here we've said script. And uh, whatever we write in here will be JavaScript. So within the tags, uh, we'll follow the tradition. Remember when uh, the first day of class we wrote, hello world. And hello world appeared on the screen, and we're okay. We're writing HTML. We're going to do something similar with JavaScript. I want the screen to display hello world via JavaScript. So here's one way to do it. Let's write alert. Open and close parentheses, semicolon. Inside of the parentheses, open and close quotes. And inside of the quotes, hello world. Save and run that and see what happens. So check your spelling, of course. If you save it and run it, a pop up happened, hello world, with a button. Okay, and then the uh, and then the um, the text that I wrote in the body. So did everyone get that pop up? All right, so um, that was our very first line of JavaScript. What it uh, what it did was it made a pop up box and alert. Uh, so uh, we're going to get some, some different terminology. What we did here was a, a method. This command created a pop-up box, and inside the quotes is what I, uh, what I wanted to display in the pop-up box. Right? That's what I wrote. That's what displayed within the parentheses. Now let's try something else. Let's go back to that line, and uh, in front of the line, let's add a couple of slashes, forward slashes. The forward slash, double forward slash, no spaces, uh, makes that into a comment. So we've seen the third type of comment. We've seen that in HTML we can write this, and whatever's in between will be an HTML comment. And then we saw in our CSS file, we ha can have slash, asterisk, asterisk, slash, which doesn't mean anything in HTML. That one was our CSS comment. It's also our JavaScript comment. And JavaScript has a third type of comment, which is slash slash. The difference here is that if you type the double slashes, it just comments that one line. Whereas if I did <coughs> asterisk slash, it starts to comment everything until I close it. See how everything became blue or green after the, um, 
after the asterisk slash. I would have to close it. And then that line is commented. And sometimes, though, I just need to comment one line, so double slashes. So we'll just comment <coughs> one line. I bring that up because I don't want to delete this bit of code, but I want to deactivate it. So double slash will deactivate it. Is it double slash on only in this script content? Exactly. Yes. The double slash only works when you're in script, in JavaScript. In, possibly. I might be wrong. Um, we'll check it in a moment. But uh, um, that's, that's the thing. We've got three types of comments. We just have to keep each one straight. But we have various options. Uh, so notice you can have a space, not a space. But anyway, I commented that out. And now instead what I want to do is write another uh, method of JavaScript, another command. This time will be prompt, open, close, parentheses, semicolon. We need quotes here. Now let's try this inside the quotes. We'll write enter name. Save and run that, and what is your result? prompt, and then some text, run it. Oh, I get another pop-up. This one says enter name, and it has a little built-in box for me to type Victor with an OK and a cancel. Excellent. So if I click OK, and then it goes away. It goes, whatever name you typed just goes away. Didn't get saved anywhere, didn't go anywhere will make it do something more useful a little later. Uh, but I'm showing you here, this is another JavaScript command that does something, a pop-up to capture a name, and then it's up to you to do something with that, with that captured text. Now notice here, I set this up so that it um, automatically had some text built in. Look at how I changed it. I wrote, okay, enter name, and then comma, and then another phrase. So whereas alert previously, I had one parameter in the parentheses, this one can have two, where the first one is, what's the text that appears above that empty box? And the second is, put something in that empty box as a placeholder. So we're going to use various JavaScript commands, also known as methods, uh, that can have a variety of parameters, and sometimes no parameter. There could be one called... Um, score counter, open close parentheses, with nothing inside. No parameter inside. And some could have multiple. And when we talk about making, making our own JavaScript commands, we can have any number of parameters that we want. Okay. Let's comment out that line. And this time let's write console dot log open close parentheses. And then inside the parentheses quotes, and again we'll write hello world.
So comment out the previous two uh, alert boxes. And now add this new command, which looks a little different, console.log, and then parentheses and quotes, and then a message. Save it and run it. What happens? Let's see. I'm going to run it. Hmm, I didn't get a pop-up. Let's do this. Uh, I'm here. There's no pop-up. Uh, let's right-click anywhere and select Inspect Element. And then when you've inspected that element, you get the developer tools, right? And then you've got a little icon right here, the one in the middle, that's your console. Click on that to turn it on. You get a pop-up down here. That's the text that we wrote. So this third command that I wrote was not a... Um, was not... Uh, a, a human readable or a front-facing um, command where the user would see. What I wrote, what we wrote on this last line, console.log, appears an, in the console. All the web browsers have this. You can look at this in, in Chrome, Internet Explorer, etc. Uh, in, usually in the developer tools. There's a screen here, a console, where uh, we see things that we that the normal user would not normally see. It's sort of like if you've got experience in in DOS or any sort of you know uh, command line interface that you type some commands and you get an output. Um, the web browser has something like that built in. Uh, you can even type commands there. So there's sort of like a little built-in command line interface to the web browser, a little uh, text area where you can write a command, such as a JavaScript command, and then made a pop-up happen. So is there any difference between clicking that and the console? Between, between what? There's a console menu option. In Firefox? Yeah. So right there on the top left. No, it's just that if you look at it like here, it will only focus on your cons console output, whereas here, and this is technically, notice if you, it says toggle split console. So you can see both your code and the console at once. Good eye, I was about to forget about that. But another thing that we could be doing is, if you only want to look at your console, you can just switch to the console view, same thing. But down here, you can write uh, JavaScript commands, prompt. And notice as you're typing, this is similar to what we saw over on the CSS panel, where you're starting to write some CSS, and it thinks, do you mean this? And it gives you a list of all, possi all possibilities. Here, I'm starting to type PRO, and I could, be, I could write property is innumerable or prompt. If I do type prompt. And like I had here, I can write some JavaScript right there, press enter, and then it makes it actually happen. And you get some, you get some uh, feedback. So I typed Victor, but it didn't really go anywhere. So I, I typed a prompt, I typed in a name, and then it, Victor went through the box, but then nothing happens with it. Uh, so the point of this is um, we're going to start to use this console now because we, we need to see sometimes JavaScript returns a result that we do not see on the, the, the body uh, of, the, of the web browser, the viewport. Uh, it returns it in the console, so we have to get used to using the console, and if you press escape on the keyboard, it pops up if you need it quickly. Yes? Is that on your phones also? You know what? I don't, I don't, uh, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, I should check my Android phone. 
but I don't doubt that it has some sort of console because Android, since it's open source, someone you know is probably set up like that. But um, oftentimes, what we what we actually do with a device is we do a little bit of setup so that we can actually see the console output on a computer. So we connect to it via uh, Telnet or other things, and then we can actually see that output on a computer because it's really small to work with. So back to our code, console.log. Let's break this down a bit. So there's a console. We're trying to work with an aspect of the, of the web browser. The web browser has a console. Later on, we'll look at something, navigator.something. We're going to affect or work with something related to the navigator, which is just the official term for the web browser. Uh, later on, we'll be able to capture GPS coordinates, navigator. Uh, location dot something. We'll be able to capture coordinates that the navigator, that the web browser is giving us. In our case here with console, we are then saying, okay, in the console, let's put out a, a message in the log, let's put out a message in those in those lines there, and the message is hello world. Hello worlds. So whatever I type, uh, within the quotes will show up in the console. And now it looks really superfluous because it doesn't really do anything for people, but we're gonna see this is very important when we start to do complex things. We're gonna see, maybe we don't get any visible error message in the, in the body, but we get an error message in the console, or we need to test things, uh, test possibilities in the console. So we need to get used to using the console. So I'm going to comment that out. Now, did you notice every command that I wrote here, as soon as I saved and ran uh, the document, they happened. Alert happened right away before I saw my H1 text. After I clicked OK, then the H1 text appeared. Same thing with prompt. It was waiting for me to type my name. I didn't see anything in the body until I clicked OK or cancel. Then I could see the body. Because it runs, the web browser takes this code and runs it line by line by line and does everything on that line. So when it got to the point of alert, everything stopped waiting for you to interact with those pop-ups. Once you've interacted, then it would go to the next line, the next line, the next line, show the H1 and the body and the document. So we've made our commands happen first before anything else happened uh, in our HTML file. I want to um, do a couple of things. I want to um, make the alert happen perhaps after the text loads up and if I capture a person's name I want to do something with it like maybe show on screen so in order to do that now we get into starting to uh, store that data via variables so variables are a thing in just about every programming language scripting language that is basically a container so this container right here, this real-world container, can hold anything. Right? Water, and apple juice, and sand, and marbles, it can hold anything. It's a container. What's inside of it can vary. That's a variable. So we're going to create a container here in JavaScript that can vary its contents, a variable. So to do that, on this next line here, let's, so I'm on line ten, uh, 9, I'm going to type var space, var for variable. I'm about to create a container, a variable, var. Then I give it a name. Uh, I'll just call it um, welcome message. These names can be just about anything, but uh, there are reserved names. Like I can't call a variable variable. I can't, I can't write var var because var already exists. It's a reserved name. I would get into problems. 
So we're creating a container, we're calling it welcome message, no spaces in your variable names. You can have uh, capital letters, you can have underscores. Uh, I don't believe you can have exclamations and such. That's reserved. You can have numbers. And I'm going to go like this, welcome message. Semicolon. Have you been noticing we've been writing a semicolon at the end of every line? The semicolon basically ends the command, and then you put a new line. So here I've uh, created a container. And uh, on the next line here, I'm going to put something into the container. So on the next line, let's write the name of the container, welcome message equals. Now, equals is different in JavaScript and many programming languages in that it's not the same. If you think of 1 plus 1 equals 2. So basically here I'm saying this here is the same as this here. That's the equal. Equality. This is the same as this. This is another way of writing this. This is in math. We're not dealing with math, we're dealing with JavaScript. So the equal has a sort of a different function here. Uh, it's not about the, the thing on the left equals the thing on the right. It's more like the thing on the right put it into the thing on the left. So whatever I, I write on the right will be put into the container on the left. And I'm going to write a, a, a welcome message in quotation marks. So open qu quote, end quote, and we'll say... Um, Welcome to my site. And at the end, semicolon. Welcome to my site. Notice I wrote that as a regular as a regular um, phrase. It's in quotes. We'll see the importance of a quote, what the quote actually means in a moment. Next line, we'll say alert, open close parentheses. This time, inside of the alert, we will not write parenthesis, uh, we will not write quotation marks. And inside of the parentheses, we'll write the name of the variable we created, welcome message. All right, save and run that. Check your result. run that, I get a pop-up. It says, welcome to my site. So the pop-up is courtesy of the alert command. And the message inside of the pop-up, welcome to my site, is courtesy of the variable that I created and filled with the message. And here we can contrast. Previously, where I had alert, I wrote quotation marks, and then the text. Here, no quotation marks. See what happens if you write quotation marks around welcome message. I'm going to write, I'm going to put quotes around welcome message. Run it. That's what my pop-up says. Welcome message, literally. That's the big difference. Quotes are going to display something literally as it's found within the quotation marks. In my case here about not using quotes, we displayed via the alert box what was in the container. So without having quotes, we basically says alert, make a pop-up, show what's in the container. With quotes, we said, show the container. It's like this. If I were to say, look at this. This is me with quotes. Look at the container. And then without quotes is that I pour it out. And you see what's inside. So that's pouring out what's on the inside of the container.
Any questions so far? Yes. All right. Let me check that out. So we've got um, we've got some pop-up boxes happening and some variables, variable action. We're going to capture our name in a variable and use it. So we've uh, d displayed the contents of that uh, variable. And now, uh, case sensitivity is enforced here. So if I had written welcome message, it'll try to dis display something called welcome message. But there's no thing called welcome message. There's a thing called welcome message. See the difference? Capital letters, lowercase letters, it is. It is case sensitive so we'll be careful about that um, so okay we've done that um, we made a pop-up happen it had what was in the container uh, let's do a couple more things here let's say we want to uh, capture we want uh, a person to write their name we want to capture that and then do something with the name so I'm gonna comment out the alert line 11, but not the var, not the creation of the variable, and not when we filled the variable. Because a variable can be reused. Early on, line 10, or line 9, we create the variable, line 10, we fill the variable, but we can refill it with other things whenever we want. So um, we don't need to comment that out. What I want to do now is fill the welcome message with a new thing. So we'll write again, welcome message equals so the equals is take the thing on the right and put it into the thing on the left. All right, so here we can write prompt enter your name. This is pretty cool. We can take the whole command we wrote previously and put it after the equals, which is basically a pop-up will happen. It'll ask for the name and it'll take the name, and then the result of that will be put into welcome message. But because computers don't really think by themselves without some programming, this will work, but then nothing will really happen. I'm going to save it. I'm going to run it. I get the pop-up. Victor, click OK. OK, well, what else? What comes next? We didn't do anything with that name. So one simple thing to do is we'll say console log, console.log. Welcome message. No quotes. Save and run that, I get the pop-up. I'm going to write my name. Nothing, 
comes up. I need to right click inspect element, go to your console, capture the name. If I refresh the web browser, it'll pop up again. Okay, there it is. So you should see that the console is outputting or displaying the contents of the variable. It's not saying, welcome to my site anymore because it goes from top to bottom. We first put the message in there, but then we rewrote what was inside of the message via the prompt. And so when you write console log here, it shows us the last message. If you want to test it out, you can put console log this exact same command, line 13, put it right after line 10, and you'll see that it'll first show you the default message, welcome to my site. Then the prompt happens, and console log runs again and then shows you the name you put in the prompt. All right, so let's say that we want to display that message on screen in the body instead of in the console. Because uh, how many of you knew about this console before today's class? Two out of 30, three out of 30. So regular users are not going to know this. Uh, that there's a console here. This is just for us developers. But what I want is that when someone types their name, uh, I want it to to show up on screen. So again, this is what Java can do. It can do this interactivity. It can it can change elements uh, like those on screen. So well, I'm going to leave the console log. And um, next line. Um, and I need to refresh my memory. Um, if, if just a quick show of hands, also, how many of you have some experience in JavaScript before? Okay, so a quick question. Remind me, guys. Is it document dot write? Yes. Okay. Good. Okay, so we're gonna say document dot write open close parentheses welcome message so this is sort of in the style about console dot log here we've got document dot write So I'm going to um, run that. It asks for my name. Click OK. There's my name on the body before the H1. So if you look at your console, it's still down there in the console, the developer's screen. But then now with document.write, we've also written the result of that prompt in the body on screen. And here, again, uh, we, we're, we'll be able to edit a variety of uh, features of the, of the website. One is that the document itself, we're going to write something on the document. And the something was what's inside of the welcome message container. So 
So it um, depends or depends or uh, what what does it do to your heart? S say that again. What does the dot mean dot write do to the heart? Uh, it uh, it writes any um, HTML uh, any text to the body of the doc of the HTML document. So what I've said here is uh, write you know whatever's inside the variable Victor, and it did. And then the JavaScript continues, and then it actually then writes or renders the H1. That's why we see that after the name. So document dot write writes whatever we want to the document. Yes. Since this script is in the head, it's in the heading, it shows up in the heading. If, if you wanted it, excuse me, to be in the in the body, you, you'd have to move the script. Down this the is body. in the body. Victor here is in the body. Document write will write to the body. We're not writing to the head. Oh, so even though this whole script tag stuff is inside the head. Mm -hmm. It's writing to the body. Yeah, because document write basically means write it to the body. So I could see how that would make sense because, okay, Victor happened before H, H1. But what's happening is that it wrote Victor before H1, but in the body. It gave us, it sort of gave itself a new line and wrote Victor there. Okay. Show that. Yeah, if we right click and we look in the inspector, it is in the body. This shows you it is in the body. All right, so um, let's say we we wanted uh, we wanted it to happen elsewhere, or maybe we wanted to style it. Well, let's let's uh, play a little with the styling. Uh, we can do styling as well uh, within what we wrote here because it'll write exactly what we tell it. So we can do this. Let's um, let's say we uh, we change what's currently in the body. Let's change that to H two. So my JavaScript practice, whatever was already in the body, we'll change that to H2 because what's going to happen is that the person's name will appear first. I actually want that to be, you know what, let's just turn it to a plain old paragraph just so that it's really obvious. Uh, let's make what was already there a, a, a paragraph, plain paragraph. And what I want is for Victor to appear as a heading one. So now we'll get a little fancy here. Uh, I want to wrap the h1 tag around welcome message. And if I were to start to write h1 and then slash h1, that would make sense, right? And so I saved it and I ran it and I don't get any more pop-up. Well, the console is something that we're going to be referring to because the console will tell us if there are errors in JavaScript. So write what I wrote here. I put the h1 tags around that. Logically, I've seen this before. This should make it into an h1 nice and big. And I save it and ran it. I didn't get any pop-up. And if I go to my console, it tells me syntax error. Well, not as, not as friendly as an error as I would have liked. And unfortunately, we're not going to get a lot of those, that the error tells you exactly what you did wrong. Because um, basically, we've got, um, we've got um, syntax errors and logic errors. And um, some of these output results they're just not smart enough to tell us exactly what the problem is. This syntax error means you wrote something wrong. The, what the something is, I don't know. I have to see some sort of documentation. But here's what the problem is. Um, we saw over here when we wrote quotes that it would that it would literally write that on screen. Hello, comma world. And when we did not write quotes, it wrote what was inside the variable. 
So here it's sort of assuming, show me what's inside of the variable h1, and then show me what's inside of the variable welcome message, and then show me what's inside the variable slash h1, which that doesn't make any sense. These are not variables. This is HTML. So let's write it like this. Write a quote around the h1, and then around the slash h1, And what I've done here is something pretty advanced because I'm trying to write two things at once. A block of code that should literally be written on screen this way. That's what the quotes are. Literally write this on screen. And show me what's inside a container. And show me what's inside of a container. So after that h1, we'll write a plus. And then after welcome message, space plus. So we've written um, the h1 in quotes plus, spaces don't matter, but it's good for readability. Uh, so h1 space plus space the variable space plus space the closing h1. Save and run that, put your name in, and what's the result? The variables always contain a space. Variables can contain uh, a variety of things, uh, numbers, which are... Sort of different types. Yeah, it can contain a variety mm -hmm. of types, yes. And we can convert from type to type. That's it is, exactly. That's the term I was looking for. The little plus here is doing concatenation, which is basically, I think of it like Legos. I'm going to put my name here. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm putting, I'm putting this Lego next to this Lego next to this Lego. I'm putting the H1 and the variable contents next to that string, that um, H1. So if it worked, you're going to see your name big and bold. So I've written to the to the body that, and you can actually write any HTML tag and CSS in here as well, um, and it writes it to the body. Did that work for everyone? Let's check that out. Make sure that your quotes are where I've got mine, which is plus. Oh yeah, it, it works fine. I don't want to say it's too good. So yours probably has that. That's a good one. Yeah. Okay, so uh, my name appears there, big and bold. Um, let's uh, play with this about adding some um, some style here. So uh, we'll we'll add some inline style like we've done before, and then we'll run into some quirks. Uh, so let's say I'm going to uh, go here to the H1, and I'm going to add uh, style equals quote end quote, and inside of there we'll write color pink. Let's see what happens. I've done this before. I'm used to writing this. This should work. No pop-up. We're seeing that if there's an error in JavaScript, 
all JavaScript is basically deactivated. So if you had 99 lines of JavaScript code that worked and your 100th line didn't, it basically deactivates the all 99 lines. So that's why sometimes it's hard to figure out what, what went wrong. But if, it, if you're adding code and suddenly it starts working, then it might be the last thing that you did did something bad. So this we've seen this before, we've written this before, and it's worked before. But here's the problem. We've been seeing we've got quote, end quote, quote, end quote. Here we've got quote, end quote, stuff, quote, end quote, stuff, quote, end quote. We have closed our quotes too early. So it thinks that display this stuff and then run a command, color, colon, pink, which does not exist as JavaScript. So let's change it instead to, to look like this, with a single quote. We've been using double quotes, but instead we'll use a single quote uh, for our color, uh, our, our property there. Single quote. Right? We've been doing shift apostrophe now, it's just regular apostrophe, single quote. So all along, I've been showing you to write double quotes. But all along, we could have been writing single quotes. Both would work. Double quotes, single quotes. I usually write double quotes. But then we get into a situation right here where normally a double quote wouldn't work because of that reason. It would think, start the quote here, end the quote there. It doesn't work. So instead, if we mix it with the two types of quotes, we'll be fine. Because this will go from top to bottom, left to right, and go here. And get to the get to the double quote, go, 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 end quote. As it's going, it also sees start single quote, going, going, end single quote, end double quote. That's why that should work now, because we've we've mixed it with different quotes and it works. So did you get your name appearing in a different color? In JavaScript, can you use single quotes and double quotes? Yeah, you can also mix it up there. And that's what we are, we are doing, JavaScript here and CSS at the same time. That's why maybe there's a little bit of a confusion. But if we were only doing straight JavaScript still, I would do it that way. And we will need to do that on occasion. We're always using double quotes, but something needs to be a quoted inside, so it's got to be single quote. We could have it opposite. We could have all of our JavaScript written in single quotes and then continue to use our CSS in double quotes. That would work too. OK, so. Um this, we're getting our intro to uh, JavaScript, and uh, there's still much more to do. <laughs> but let's uh, let's take a short break. It's 7:02, 7:05 ish. Let's take a 10 minute break. We'll be back at 7:15. Uh, we'll be back at 7:15, and then we'll do more JavaScript.